Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. In today's video, we are over on the test server link in the description to get onto it to take a look at the new Graveborn hero Hodgkin. Now, this is on the test server. Probably next Tuesday-ish is when it will drop on global servers. So not out on global yet. But dude looks cool. I'm actually a bigger fan of the of this art than the in-game sprite. Some characters I'm a bigger fan of the in-game sprite. I just feel like he looks like older and more dull in this one as opposed to this. This this he it feels like he's got more attitude here. But he is a strength-based tank, so. I was anticipating Ranger, like more of a gunslinger, but when he's got two massive cannons for arms, I can I can get the tank. I can get the tank vibes. Um, yeah, anyway, let's get into his skills. So, the Immortal. Hodgkin summons a ghost ship and animations are sick for this dude. Hodgkin summons a ghost ship that crashes into the most con concentrated area of enemies, dealing 330% AoE damage to enemies, simultaneously siphoning their s the souls of all enemies on the battlefield for seven seconds. Enemies that have, have their souls siphoned also have their damage and healing efficiency reduced by 25%. And then with the skill up, enemies are additionally terrified for 3.5 seconds, which is really nice. So we've got the healing reduction, we've got um, the damage reduction, and we've got a terrified type to this, along with some AOE damage, which ain't too bad. And remember the soul siphoning because a lot of his abilities are tied into that, but, Pretty decent alt all round, and from my testing, I don't think it's like a full screen hit, but the hitbox seems pretty wide. It seems a lot like Prince's hitbox from the little bit of play testing I did with him. So pretty decent range on it as well. Hodgkin raises both of his, uh, both, both his Soul Devourer cannons and deals 240% damage to his target, also siphoning their soul in the process. Once again, that siphon comes in. The effects of the soul siphon um, are the same as the Immortal, so you get the, the damage reduction and the um, healing reduction. This ability has an additional 35% life leech effect when damage is dealt, so you get some health back from it. Um, if an enemy is already under the soul siphon, they will be additionally stunned for three seconds. So nice bit of control if he uses it after his ult, or if he just does back-to-back -back ones with it chaining long enough. I don't think I don't know if he he'll use two of this uh, in the seven-second duration of the ability of the soul siphon so we'll have to test that further i didn't check that before but still not bad if he uses his ult then rolls into this he's going to stun him for three seconds as well um hopefully he uses it like 3.5 seconds after his ult because they'll be terrified and then he can just go boom and get another three seconds of cc on it hodgkin summons down a jolly roger flag that deals 230 percent aoe damage to nearby enemies allied heroes that are within the range have their defense ratings increased by 20 percent and their attack ratings increased by 20%. That goes up to 30 and 30 with skill ups uh, for the following 10 seconds. If an enemy within range has had their soul siphoned, the flag shall be strengthened with its duration being extended to three seconds. I'm assuming that means by three seconds. I don't know if there's a limit on this. If you use his ultimate when that flags out and you hit like five enemies, I don't know if it's going to get 15 seconds. I'm not sure exactly how that works yet, but extended by three seconds is what I'm assuming it's meant to say. After the flag has been strengthened, any allied heroes within range shall have their haste additionally increased by 35 points. Um, allies within the range of the, yeah, like I said, it goes up to 30 and 30 on attack and defense for that skill up. Okay, his last skill, Re Reviler's Defiance. I think that's how it's said. Hodgkin starts blocking frontal damage and is immune to control effects for up to three seconds, or until the block amount of damage equals 25% uh, of his max health. After Hodgkin finishes blocking damage, he immediately retaliates against the attacker, dealing up to 15% of the attacker's max health as damage. The amount of damage dealt is determined by the duration of time Hodgkin was blocking damage for. Uh, but shall not exceed 550% of Hodgkin's own attack rating. Damage equal to 35% of his max health can be blocked, and then deals up to 20% of the target's max health. But the 550% is a, feels like a kind of low attack scaling. It's not too actually no, it's not too bad. But that's all right. So that is his final skill. So quick recap on basic skills: puts the ship out there, uh, debuffs the enemies, and also fears them. This one does the soul siphon thingy 
and if they're already soul siphoned it's going to stun them for three seconds the flag to buff allies and it can get extended and get the extra buff and then this one where he blocks damage he's immune to cc and then he retaliates with some extra damage so signature item Hodgkin immediately recovers 10% of his max health for every non-summoned target that has their soul siphoned. This effect can be triggered three times every 4.5 seconds. So basically, if he uses his ult and hits five enemies, it's only going to get the effect for three of them, which is 30%. But that does increase with skill up. So Hodgkin immediately recovers 15% of his max health. Um, Hodgkin's one most injured ally also recovers 15% of their max health, which is nice. And then this one, each time an enemy has their soul siphoned, the damage Hodgkin deals to that enemy is permanently increased by 20%. This effect can be stacked against every enemy a maximum of three times. So you can effectively get up to a 60% damage increase on this guy on all targets if he spams some ults. It seems to be a real theme on, um, you know, Torn and Izold and stuff like that, where these guys just want to last longer into battle and then they just ramp up. So that's a really interesting one. I'm not sure whether he's going to be like a carry viable type option, but he does seem fairly tanky, so not too bad. Um, and obviously every time he ults, he's going to be getting 15% of his health back, but if it hits three targets, he's going to get 45%. And then he's also got his other ability where when he uses that, he's going to get 15% back. So he's got some nice sustain in that as well. Moving on to the furniture, when an enemy has their soul siphoned, the effect shall continue up until Hodgkin's death. So basically that debuff stays on them forever. So that that where I was talking about, you know, if this one, whether the, um, whether the effect would continue on and he could loop them when it's a seven second duration, this negates the need for that because basically once their soul siphoned, it's, it's siphoned and that's it until he dies. They keep the debuffs. Uh, enemies that have their soul siphoned shall have their healing efficiency and damage reduced by 35%. That's just an extension of the skill up in uh, the um, the ultimate ability. If the same enemy has their soul siphoned again, they will be dealt a damage equal to 290% of Hodgkin's attack. So you can see that the soul siphon is going to stay forever. So if he does one ult, sort of gets it on all of them. And then he's going to do another ult and just increase, scale the damage with the signature item and the furniture is the way it's intended, I believe. So let's just jump in and take a look at it and have a look over here. I'm still not sure. Like it's like the kit reads really nice. It's just going to be if his numbers are big enough is pretty much what it comes down to. So that's the flag. You see him doing his charge where he's going to block attacks and stuff like that. So that's his little one. That's his second ability where he brings both cannons out and shoots them. And you can see when they've been siphoned, they get the little siphoned logo on top of their head, um, which is like easy indicator as well. But here comes the ultimate, which once again looks pretty sick. Uh, okay, let's put on four times speed. I want to show you guys a couple ultimates so you can see the range of it. So it hit everyone on screen, the mage behind and the guys in front. So like I said, it's a pretty decent range on the ship um, from what, we, what I can tell from this. So he'll use this one and it's going to stun everyone on screen, even though they were pretty well split up. So... Like, like, that ship stopped, like, right back here, but it still hit everyone. So, I don't know if it's going to have a full screen hitbox, or whether it's, like, like I said, kind of like uh, Prince's, but we'll have to wait and see. But, all in all, he seems like he's got some pretty good damage mitigation, good self-healing with his signature item, um, and some pretty decent scaling damage. That's what it's going to come down to, the scaling damage, but also some nice CC on top of that as well, and, like... The 25% damage reduction on enemies and also healing reduction. It's like, it's a nice solid kit. So I'm looking forward to testing this guy because I think he has some viability, more viability than the last couple characters we've had. So fingers crossed. So let's check him out in this. Uh, I feel like Desara, I feel like the standard like eyes old teams will be kind of decent with him because I feel like he wants to operate the same as Eyes Old, except he's not really, I don't think he's really going to be a carry damage dealer. I think he's going to be, I think he might even supplement well into an Eyes Old team. Not too sure because it depends. I don't think he's going to deal with us enough damage as a tank, but once again, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we can't do this without putting the Thick Boy in there. We'll put um, you in there to grab her and then we'll just put, we'll put Rosalind in and hopefully she follows him because I think he's got the most power. He does. So then we can like just stack those ults and see what happens. So let's put on one time speed. Wow, Titus got nuked. Actually, that might've been the Rosaline nuking the Titus. Rigby, you blow up that beer, man. Okay, Zara coming. 
Here we go. So you just got buffed by Rosaline. So he should ult here in a sec. Boom. Got the fears. Like it hit top and bottom. Like I feel like it is a full screen hit. I feel like it's actually genuinely a full screen. And just hits everything. So I might try I might try that battle. Let's check the damage first. Okay, Rosaline doing all the deeps. Dude, once again, I feel like if it's a longer drawn out battle, he'll excel more in the damage because he gets all those increases. So if we go back in here. And he's also got that support where he's healing an ally as well, which isn't too bad. Um, so if we go you, I'm going to go like a full sustain team. Um, like I'm literally going to take that. I I'm curious to see like what happens. Obviously it's not going to be the best. Actually, I should have taken totem dude. So as you can see, he shot that Titus, got a bit of a heal back. If he can ult here, if he can ult, please, lose your shield. Okay, so now he should get a bunch of, see, see that healing? See that healing from the ult? And it hit every, and it feared everyone. So I think it's just a complete board CC, which I'm really cool with. Okay, we're going to get killed here. No, we got, and once again, he got his immune because he got his little, his ability where he becomes immune to damage. I mean, immune to CC and blocks all the damage. It looks like he avoided some damage there. Or the immune might have been from Desira. But yeah, once again, that ship fearing everyone on the enemy team. Fearing everyone. I think he's going to be pretty solid. I think he's going to be pretty, pretty solid. Like, we're going to die here, obviously. But oh no, we got we got the Desira ult. <laughs> oh, that's pretty clutch. That was a pretty clutch Desira ult. But once again, that ship popped up the top. It's still got the um, Sophia. So I'm going to call it a board CC, but don't quote me. I mean, someone's going to say, no, that once. But it's a pretty big range, which is quite nice. We're we going to get nuked here. I just love the fact that every time he does an ult. Ah, oh, there he goes. Honestly, reason, pretty reasonable effort uh, in a three-man team. But every time he does that ult, he's getting so much health back. Um, obviously not a great deal of damage compared to something like an Isabella, but still, like, that wasn't too bad. Took a good chunk of damage, fair bit of healing, like, fair bit of healing, not too bad. So, once again, I think he's going to be fairly viable. I just like his kit. I like the fact that he's got this passive to help him survive better. He's got the healing. He's also got the team healing. He's got the team buffs as well through this. Um, he's just, he just, this is what the, the most recent characters in the game have really been lacking, that... That good utility of like added effects. Like if we look at something like Tali, like she was just a raw damage. Yes, she had that one buff from her furniture, but like raw damage without enough damage, whereas this guy just brings a lot. He brings debuffs to the enemies, like reduces the damage your team's gonna take from the enemies, fears the enemies, he's got the stuns on the enemies, like he's got the buff for the, the allies, he's got a heal for his allies, he's got some good damage mitigation and um and you know cc immunity i think he's got a really nice kit but let me know what you guys think it's going to come down to testing as always but i'm definitely thinking this guy's going to see some play as to how much i think it's going to depend on numbers and how well he scales into the later game but uh but yeah hodgkin pretty cool character i love this artwork anyway guys that is going to be it for this one thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i'll look forward to seeing the next one cheers